Hi, welcome back to Scale Model Kit Review. This is your host, Steve. Up next in this video, I'm going to feature Eagle Moss's Aston Martin DB5. This is issue number eight. Now with issue number eight, we'll be looking at stage 27, 28, 29, and 30. In this video, I'm just going to show you stage 27. Now as we go along with these videos, as I segment them to make them shorter for you, we may not actually assemble some items uh, in some of the, the stages. That's because they have you go back and forth. They have you accumulate parts throughout the issues and then combine them all. We may be doing a lot of assembly on the very last stage that I mentioned earlier. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and feature what we actually received with issue 8. Issue 8, to my surprise, whoa, I was super excited because what the heck was this they sent me? This huge box, right? This box has a stand for the car. So I opened it up and I'm not going to take it out of the plastic, but this is the base for the DB5. Look at that. Very nice. It's heavy duty and uh, that's going to look really cool when the car is completed and it's actually mounted on top of this. With that also they sent me a name placard that goes on the front of it. And I'll put a close-up view of this on the screen here so you can see what it looks like. But it's 007 name placard. So that's, that's super excited too. And I'll show you that in detail. You probably see it right now. So with that, continuing on with issue 8. Let's look at stage 27. I'll be right back. We'll look at the magazine. We'll look at the assembly of 27. And then we'll build 27. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Here's a magazine for issue 8. Let's look through this real quick. And first off, we start off with the table of contents. If you would, head down to my description below where I provide a link on how you can subscribe to this Eagle Moss Aston Martin DB5 build. It's available for USA subscribers today, so hurry up and get your copy. First off, the contents breaks it down into how to build it, which is your car parts and then start the car, bond actors, Moore makes an entrance, they introduce us to Roger Moore, bond actors David Henderson, and production voodoo victims, so we continue on with the live and let die theme, then we talk about uh, the gentleman that produced the, the sound recording for live and let die, which was Paul McCartney, so the sound quality and then we get into a little bit of making the spy who loves me and then we highlight another one of bond, women of bond and that would be Barbara Bach moving on we have a listing of all the parts that are included with this issue and we have uh, four different stages going on 27 28 29 and 30 so we'll look at stage 27 for this issue because this is that's going to be part of this video so in this case we will assemble the glove compartment lid and we'll also assemble the ignition key, ignition switch and the bonnet release handle along with the control clear plate. I'll skip through the other and we get right into Roger Moore makes his entrance into Live and Let Die. Great little article here on him. And then we have an article on David Henderson. Most famous in the TV show Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Then we have Voodoo Victims and one of my favorite scenes from Live and Let Die. And uh, watch out for those snakes folks. Then of course great article here on Paul McCartney and how he uh, united with George Martin to uh, do the project. 
and it's one of my favorite theme songs. Along with uh, now we got The Spy Who Loved Me, which was a release date of 7 July 1977. Look at Jaws there with Roger Moore. And uh, this movie made $185.4 million. Moving on with that, this is where they, the producer always tried to find real sets, but in this case, the, the top left there is not a real set. They actually created a model for that scene there. So we have four pages of that. And then lastly, my favorite part of the magazine, a Women of Bond, and this would be Barbara Bach. It's a great article on her. And that is it. So stay tuned. We'll go ahead and show you the parts for pack 27 and we'll assemble it. I'll be right back. Here's stage 27, parts pack 27. And you can see everything's wrapped real nicely in this bag. I'll go ahead and take everything out so we can get a closer look at them and then we'll assemble this issue. Here's all the parts that were contained within the bag for pack 27. We received the clear control panel, the two ignition keys, bonnet release handle, glove box compartment lid, and the ignition switch. No screws were found within the bag, but we do have plenty of screws left over from previous issues. Um, so I actually keep those in a box here with all the spare parts that are left over. So stay tuned. We'll go ahead and start assembling this issue. Before we get started on this build, I'd like to give you a tip on assembly and it might make your job a lot easier so eventually we're going to install this into the dash and on the back side is where our screws go into but if you if you want you can go ahead and thread your screws in a little bit to get your thread started so when you go to install it on the main component it makes it a lot easier the other thing is with this build um, the screws aren't even marked so it takes a process of elimination to know what type what type of screw is what and they tell us we have to use U-type screws so through previous builds I figured out that the U screws were these right here with the, the flat end on them and you can see they correlate with that because when this gets inserted into the dash the holes on the dash themselves are real large so those these flat type screws have to be able to hold it in place and that's the process of elimination there so I know I need to have two of these U-type screws for this next build. So in order to, like I was saying, you just take and thread these in to get your thread started. Make it nice and clean. And it will just help you out. And back it out. Do the same thing on the other one. And you want to try to thread them in as straight as possible. Right, and I'll back it out. And then we're all set to install it on the dash. I'll be right back. So our next step is to put the glove box cover on. And that simply just slides down. Just like that. Not very hard to figure out. And once it's down on the other side, you can see where our U-type screws are supposed to go in to hold it still. And that's going to be easy enough. Since I already pre-threaded them, that will work easily. There we go. And that should hold it together, just like that. There we go. In the meantime, I took the wire bundles and I just kind of wound them up, taped them together so they're out of the way for further use. When we get our electronics board, they'll be ready to go for that. Next is going to be easy. 
and we don't have any screws that we need to use for this but we need to have our uh, ignition switch ready to go here so I'm going to untangle the wires for that carefully just kind of give a quick inspection of all the wires make sure they look okay no problems there and what we're going to do is we're just going to insert the ignition switch from the back side through the dash and you can see it only goes in one way if you'll see there's a flat edge here right there that flat edge is going to go right up against the back of the dash because there's a flat spot right there so that helps us out there so we'll take and insert that like that you hope <laughs> oh there it goes okay right there and it just kind of squeezes in there seems to me you'd want to glue that in place but I'm not going to do that because we might lose the, the functionality of the key by putting glue on there so then we'll just put our key in carefully and there you go this is what the key looks like inserted and the back side is what the ignition switch looks like there we go the next step we install the bonnet release handle and that's this chrome handle right here it is keyed also has a flat edge on it you can see right there and we'll just put we'll just put that in no glue required just snaps in there you go here's the bonnet release handle next we'll install the clear piece onto the instrument panel and that simply just goes over the goes onto it like that together and after that this will go into the instrument panel next we install the instrument cluster onto the dashboard and that simply lines up the two large alignment pins here we'll flip it over and I've kind of bundled up the wiring here to keep it out of the way nice and neat so we'll use a Q-type screw to secure this. Just two of them get installed. That's that and we were supposed to install this dash mount in the previous issue these tabs here line up with the mounts on the inside there and we're going to use an L-type screw for that taking care that your wiring goes in like it should there we go you can see Everything's lined up and down in place. Our L screw goes right in that hole right there. The instructions don't tell you what type of screw it is. So I might be installing this prematurely. We might be installing it later on. But I think it definitely has to go in uh, as per the previous issue. Told me to put it in, but didn't tell the type of screw. So put the L screw in it and tighten it down and there you have it I 
and our little switch works off the dash there. Looks really good. And that is all we do for stage 27. We install the bonnet release. We installed the glove box panel, ignition key, ignition switch, and all our instruments. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Remember to subscribe to this. Head down to my comments below. I put a link on how you can subscribe to this yourself. Everyone in the U.S., it's now available for us to order and build. So do that right away. I wouldn't pass on this. It's going to be a massive kit. You could see with this issue, we received that big box which had the the base for this kit. So the base is awesome. Very heavy duty. I was impressed with it. So with that, I hope you enjoyed it. Happy modeling everybody. Take care.